Coming up on this edition of Access Virginia Beach, cheers to a new school year. More than 70,000 students storm the halls during the first day of classes. Plus, the ribbon is cut on a new academy that teaches students the ins and outs of starting a successful business. And a new healthcare facility for veterans is coming to the resort city. We'll show you where. That and more coming up as we access Virginia Beach. Hello and welcome to VVTV's Access Virginia Beach, a program that informs you of news and events from around our city and schools. I'm Stephanie Sutton. Thanks for joining us. Perhaps you've noticed big yellow buses, crossing guards stopping traffic, and plenty of children at the neighborhood bus stops. Yes, the first day of vacation started for parents as their children returned to the hallowed halls of learning. Let's take a look at how the first day of school went at two local schools. Tallwood Elementary School, just one of 84 schools located in the district that welcomed back students for the first day of school. Good morning. How are you guys? Our kids um, love coming to school. We try to make learning fun. Uh, we want uh, school to be somewhere where the kids can go and be safe, be comfortable, and enjoy learning. Tallwood is in its second year as a digital learning anchored school. The program allows students to take ownership of their academic growth and gain global perspectives by using digital tools provided by the school. It helps them prepare them for their next level of learning. But more specifically with our fifth graders going to Brandon Middle School, we want to teach them to be uh, the kind of student that goes there and has the ability to be a learner, lifelong learner, uh, find their own information, solve their own problems, uh, think on their own, uh, to be able to take whatever learning target that they're faced with and know how to learn on their own. Are you all excited? We're to be on TV. Yay. Yay, just you. Welcome back. Welcome back. And speaking of Brandon Middle School, they welcomed back nearly 1,200 students, and you know they were happy about it. Our goal is for students to soar to new heights. That's our theme this year. So we want them to go further than they've ever gone. Going further in order to have the best year possible. No problem for the Chargers here at Brandon Middle School. Our students are going to get involved this year and do lots of activities, but on the first day they're just learning about what we have to offer at Brandon and um, where to go, get their lockers, sixth graders get excited about that, so just making sure they're comfortable. <laughs> Sofas in the classroom? Comfort sure has changed. Not all classrooms here at Brandon are that comfy, but these students sure were appreciative for a break from the desk. The school division welcomed nearly 70,000 students for the first day of school. Parents, if you're looking for bus routes, school hours, or immunization records, check out vbschools.com. And did you know that with the start of the school year came a new academy? Welcome to Kempsel High School and the Entrepreneurship and Business Academy. You're a chief now, and you're going to love it here. Students, staff, and family members gather to celebrate the school division's newest addition. Academy is all about providing students an opportunity to learn more about business and entrepreneurship, develop those set, that set of skills that they need to then be able to own and operate their own business. Carmina Buensuceso. 109 students Amina make up Carter. the freshman class. Each member received Kennedy a memento Cassidy. to celebrate their enrollment. Students are excited for the journey ahead. I hope I learn, you know, how to take my idea of opening a publishing company and build upon it. I hope to learn um, just like leadership skills because um, with like entrepreneur, uh, I chose the entrepreneurial route, um, you know, just how to become a good leader and how to, um, you know, focus on the main details of um, anything that comes my way. One, two, three. The Academy welcomes all students who are considering careers in the field of business. It offers three strands of study entrepreneurship and innovation, business information technology, and corporate finance. Of course, a lot of work goes into getting kids ready for the new school year. Corporate Lane and Middle School made the process a little easier for families when they held a special event for students identified as homeless. This is our sixth Jump Start event. The community comes together and really helps the kids that have been identified throughout the school year as living in um, unstable housing situations and that have real marginal 
um, ability to take care of their kids' basic needs. We provide um, brand new out outfits. Some, some are slightly used, but fashionable, in-style outfits, jeans, brand new shoes, um, school supplies. We give them haircuts, uh, food from Foodline, and hygiene products from Walgreens. And just to be able to give them a great start back to school and make them feel proud to go back to school. I got a pink hoodie and I got a purple pair of leggings, jeans, some um, blue shorts, and a couple pair of sh shirts. Uh, I have to buy nothing out of pocket. Everything is covered, so it's it's a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing, and they love it. So it's like they're going shopping <laughs> without me having to spend any money. So it works. It is one of the most rewarding things that I do every year and the impact that we know that just having a smile and making the people that come to us feel valued and to see a child get their first back to school haircut who may not have had that or a new book bag, um, it just means the world to us and we're so happy to be able to participate. We want to reach as many families as we can and we want kids to feel good about themselves that first day of school. We see miraculous changes with kids, sometimes with their first professional haircut, and um, they, they come out just looking so different. Their eyes are bright, they're happy. And then when they get to school, there's like, here's my first day of school outfit, just like everybody else has. Not only did students get clothing and free haircuts, they even received vision tests, backpacks, school supplies, toiletries, and food. Each year, 1,200 active duty personnel exit the military in Hampton Roads region. Taking care of those veterans is the top priority. The resort city recently made headlines with their involvement in a new care facility. Here's Access reporter Jarrell Thomas with more. I have the honor of announcing that Virginia Beach will be the new home for the new Veterans Health Care Center. Military veterans from around the region will soon be able to receive critically important health care services in Virginia Beach. The new 120-bed facility will offer a mixture of skilled nursing care, dementia care, and short-term rehabilitation for Virginia veterans. This city will do everything we can to retain <clears throat> and grow and support our military. And when we get to the part of support, that means that we also support the military when they're not currently served. I truly see this as an honor at what we're doing, along with a true responsibility. The new Virginia Beach facility will be the Commonwealth's fourth veteran care center. It will be built in the Princess Anne area of the city on a 24-acre site donated by the city of Virginia Beach. It will serve the Hampton Roads region, home to more than 200,000 veterans, the largest concentration in the Commonwealth. Long-term care is a very high area of need for veterans because of the age of the veteran population. And in particular, on, in the Hampton Roads area, there aren't any nearby facilities that specialize in the care of veterans. The target is to break ground in 2017 and have the new center online by 2019. The state-operated facility will offer quality care in a home-like setting. The Veterans Care Center will be located in Virginia Beach's BioHealth Corridor, an area home to a number of institutions of higher education and regional health care leaders. Football season is here, and while many schools around the division are celebrating their wins, Princess Anne High School turned the spotlight off the game and on to one of their students. <laughs> Cavaliers opening football game turned into a hero's welcome when Virginia Beach Mayor Will Sessom stepped onto the field. I tell you, you got a cheering squad, man. Sessoms was at the game to present one very brave student with a life-saving award. But now I have the opportunity to, to recognize a young person who's done something exceptional. Earlier this summer, sophomore Miles Williams was skimboarding on the Chesapeake Bay when he saw two tourists struggling in the water. I threw my board down and I ran in as quick as possible. Um, and I grabbed the first one and brought him back to shore. And uh, then I grabbed the second one. And by then, people had showed up and we pulled them up onto the beach. And we checked them, checked their pulse, and made sure they were okay. Thanks to his quick actions, two lives were saved. 
And although his family and friends are incredibly proud of him, Miles is very humble. Knowing that I did this, I don't really consider myself a hero. I just feel like I was in the right place at the right time. Miles is obviously a very strong swimmer. In fact, he's a year-round swimming athlete. Coming up next on this edition of Access Virginia Beach, residents get the first look at plans for the new 4th Precinct and Neighborhood Park. And these baby dragons caught staff at the Virginia Aquarium by surprise with their unexpected arrival. We'll have that and more when we return. Virginia Beach Schools Parent Connection is your one-stop resource for information and events that support families and promote student success. Military-connected students and their parents are invited to attend a College Options for Military Students presentation on Thursday, September 22 at Cox High School, Tuesday, October 11 at Tallwood High School, or Thursday, October 20 at Ocean Lakes High School. All events will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. Military Connected School Counselors will share information about scholarships, the dependent GI Bill, in-state tuition exceptions, and more. To RSVP, call 263-1980. VB Schools assists families that do not have a home computer through the Parent Connection VA STAR program, which provides free refurbished desktop computers to identified students to support academic achievement. To apply for a computer or for information about how to donate computers to the VA STAR program, call 263-1937. To learn more about important deadlines or to see a complete calendar of Parent Connection events, visit vbschools.com and click on the Parent tab at the top of the page. Welcome back to Access Virginia Beach, I'm Stephanie Sutton. The historic Kempsville region of Virginia Beach is getting a much-deserved new police precinct. Community members recently joined Councilman Bobby Dyer and members of the production team for a town hall meeting. Let's take a look. This is your fourth precinct. It's our fourth precinct. And I'll tell you, the uh, fourth precinct currently, we grew out of it. It's not as functional. It's not ready, it's not what we need, this is what we need. As architects, we can only do well what we know. And so with the voice of the people, we often could do a lot more and make it a better product once we hear from you folks, because in the essence, this is really your community. Where are the cop cars exiting to get to what they need to get to? Are they tearing through that existing parking lot? We'll be still the same existing parking lot. We'll be coming from the back side back onto Lobo. So is that one connected to that parking? Over here. Yeah, I'd like to be good if I would have clarified that for you. You know, if there's an if there's an emergency, if something blocks a way of them getting out the front, you know we were talking about betterments to do their job better. What they didn't have the luxury of is another way to get out and that happens. So response time goes down. What we're looking at is that the current footprint that we are in, the building we're in, is about 9,000 square feet of uh, total operating space. Uh, the new facility is going to have 17,000 square feet. Uh, we're going to actually have uh, 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 room to grow because currently right now we have 101 officers that uh, work in the building. Uh, but we're supposed to have up to 120 smart officers will be able to work in that building. Yeah, well, we've been uh, very uh, blessed by having that opportunity to work with uh, the architects and public works and the police department and integrating the special site and being able to integrate the park space with the police precinct. Um, it's very difficult and challenging sometimes to do that, but uh, getting involved up front helped us uh, retain our goals of uh, retaining the, the tree canopy, creating good park connectivity, and also integrating it. Uh, very, very well with the police precinct building. Um, I think we have a very, uh, very well thought out product and that the community can be very proud of. Construction of the new precinct is scheduled to start at the beginning of 2017 with officers expected to move in in 2018. Each month, Superintendent Aaron Spence highlights one student, staff, or community partner that is driven, passionate, and determined. This video is then presented to the school board during their meetings. Today, we share the story of Bevan Raynan. 
Hockley is basically the big warm welcome that we provide to new teachers. Uh, new teachers that are brand new to the profession but also those who are transferring in from other divisions and we bring them all together for a week long and it's a great time to really give them an idea of Compass to 2020 and various curriculum things that they need to know in order to start the year on the right foot. Truly that first year of teaching is extremely challenging. I can remember my first year of teaching which was extremely challenging and really we want to provide them the support that they need because I mean it will follow them for the rest of their careers. We really want to do a good job of laying that foundation for them. We continuously provide different types of trainings to new teachers. Uh, we have a new teacher mentoring program and that program basically ensures that every new teacher that has zero years of experience or those that are provisionally licensed have a mentor to provide them support throughout the year. This year, the Office of Professional Growth and Innovation brought together a teacher mentor advisory group, and this group consisted of five different lead mentors. We had elementary, middle, and high school representation, and our goal was basically to come together to really try to revamp our program, and these teachers were so helpful in helping our office make sure that our program is up to date, providing the best kind of support that we can provide. We leverage teacher voice and truly teachers should be involved in all the decisions that we make and their voice was definitely in the different modifications that we've made to our program. We want to retain our best teachers and we also want to make sure that every single student has a high quality teacher so that they could reach their fullest potential as well. There are approximately 400 new teachers in the division this school year. Partnerships are a key ingredient in the school division's recipe for success charting the core strategic plan. In a unique venture, students from around the city are joining forces with local farmers to bring home the homegrown. In a garden located just off 17th Street, these young farmers from the Green Lions Club at Leekhorn Park Elementary are learning valuable lessons regarding what's good to eat and where to get it. Buy Fresh by Local Hampton Roads is an organization that connects people and communities with local food. Planting, picking, or pruning, the three P's involved with Farm to School program. The event is celebrated in the month of October. We've teamed up with the Farm to School initiative to take this message into the public school system during the month of October when it's honored. And this is a time when cafeterias are encouraged to buy their produce from local sources. And this teaches the kids about the importance and the benefits of eating locally. Tomatoes, carrots, peppers, and cucumbers are just a few of the treats that could be on the menu during school lunches this year. Teaching students about the importance and benefits of eating locally is key to the program's success. The Stork made a surprise delivery at the Virginia Aquarium and Marine Science Center, and now staff are celebrating the unexpected arrival of two baby Komodo dragons. As soon as I stepped on to the exhibit, my attention was drawn down and then I noticed out of the corner of my eye what looked like baby lizards sticking their heads out of the ground. These were new hatchlings. They had just come out of the ground so they were probably had literally come out of the eggs you know within a couple of hours and had worked their way to the surface. They were about maybe two, two and a half feet down under the soil and the, the track that they followed sort of dog-legged a little bit so they had to travel a bit of a distance to get out of there. When we have a, a birth or arrival of, of new babies of any animal, it's always very exciting. But in the case of Komodo dragons, there's a lot of effort and, and research and, and sharing of information between everyone that, has, that have Komodo dragons to help promote the growth of the species and the reproduction. So the fact that we have two successful hatchlings and two so far appearingly healthy hatchlings is very exciting for everybody. All of our jaws dropped when we saw that we had two new additions to our collection. Seeing those two little faces in the dirt was, um, it was amazing. It was amazing. And I can't wait to work with them. The two animals that were found ended up incubating for probably a minimum of seven months, or plus or minus a little bit of a couple weeks here or there, on exhibit. And more typically, 
um, you would take the eggs when they're laid and put them in an incubator. In this case, um, even though we were checking constantly the exhibit area, we were looking and digging and looking around for eggs during the breeding season, we never found any, so she snuck one by us, was able to hide some eggs, probably at nighttime, um, and they incubated successfully, and we, we got these two as a result. It's not very common to have hatchling dragons at a facility. There's really only two places that get them fairly frequently, and frequently is like every couple of years. It was especially important, and you could say emotional, because it was apparent that these were the offspring of Jude, who was a female Komodo dragon that we recently lost. And our reproductive efforts with Jude and our breeding male, Taman, were successful. I can tell you something about Jude. She was special. She was the one dragon we could go in with. We could go in with her and scratch her and spray her down and pick loose skin off of her. And she even had little tickle spots. That's what we called them, <laughs> little tickle spots. Um, she was just a really, really laid back little dragon. It's bittersweet because of Jude, but at the same time, she left a legacy. And so we're very happy that, um, that we have two uh, seemingly very healthy animals now that are doing well, they're eating well, um, and acting like just smaller versions of 10-foot Komodo dragons. This is the first Komodo dragon birth in the history of the Virginia Aquarium. The baby dragons have not been named and will stay in a nursery behind the scenes. So unfortunately, you can't check them out just yet. And with that, we've come to the end of our show. But if you've missed something, you can view this program online. Log on to vbgov.com media. Today, we leave you with one last look at the granddaddy of them all, the 54th Annual East Coast Surfing Championships. Boxing made its debut at this year's event featuring beach police officer Frank Philippone. But of course, surfing was the highlight of the seven-day festival as tropical depressions actually brought waves to the delight of all. Skateboarding and bike riding charged up the crowds with their aerial skills while volleyball action took place on the beach. Looked like a great time was had by all. For everyone here at VBTV, I'm Stephanie Sutton. Thanks for watching.